assalamu alaikum <clears throat> today we are going to study the poem ode to the west wind by pb shelley let's start with this pb shelley is one of the key english romantic poet and he is regarded by some scholars as one of the best lyric poets to have ever written in the english language so <clears throat> he is well known poet and uh, Uh, Sir Thomas Medwin wrote about uh, his early years in the life of Percy Shelley. <clears throat> A joyful and contented childhood was had mostly engaged in outdoor activities like fishing and hunting. <clears throat> so let's start with the poem. The poem is written in uh, 70 lines each has a uh, Uh, five cantos and uh, five uh, it means five sonnets it means that it has 14 lines and for ev- uh, every section has 14 lines so <clears throat> each uh, each of the po- five parts of the uh, poem contains five stanzas four three lines stanzas and two line couplet all metered in iambic pentameter the rhyme scheme in each part follows a pattern known as Tazarima. It means the three-line rhyme schemes employed, and it was first employed by the Divine Comedy. So each part of the poem follows this rhyme scheme, uh, like A B A B C B C D C D E D and E E. So in the first canto, O why O wild west wind, thou breath of autumn's being. thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing yellow and black and pale and hectic red pestilence stricken multitudes o thou whose charioteest to their dark wintry bed the winged seeds where they lie cold and low each like a corpus within its grave until this thine azure sister of the spring shall blow her clarion over the reeming earth and fill driving sweet birds like flux to field in air with living hues and odor plain wild spirit which art moving everywhere destroyer and preserver here o oh, here so in the first canto the poet directly addresses the west wind and shows his reader the power of the wind <laughs> in the first stanza in uh, the speaker appeals to the wild west wind the use of the capital letters for west and uh, winds and it immediately suggests that he is speaking to the wind as though it were a person he is giving the uh, he is giving human quality to the wind <coughs> so in, in the first stanza of the poem the poet describes a natural phenomena journey of life from birth to death in apparent meaning the poet talks about the capabilities of the wind the wind is invisible yet it can scatter the leaves he describes the color of leaves as yellow and black and white and red these are the symbols of sickness yellow pale and black and white and the red hectic red is the symbol of bloodshed so he said that wind moves them like sick people he uses this example in this ode for the purpose of explanation of the role of the west wind it it cannot leaves most spontaneously therefore it is the wind which helps them to move from one point to another so it also suggests that the uh, that the uh, wind is like a person who is speaking and he calls the wind the breath of autumn's being thereby further personifying the wind and giving it the human quality of having breath in the very first line so he describes the wind as having unseen presence which make it seems as though he views the wind as a sort of god or the spiritual thing <clears throat> in the last line of the first stanza you can see that he specifically refers to the wind as spiritual being that drives away the death and ghost he is giving the spiritual quality god like quality to the winds so in the second stanza he uh, he compares the uh wind with the autumns and autumn leaves uh, which can uh, which can describes the dead and autumn leaves which they are not described as colorful and beautiful but rather as a symbol of death and even disease 
The speaker describes the deadly colors yellow, black, and pale. So, and in the next stanza, he said that almost every person in the earth has felt the west wind, but no one has ever felt in such a way as the poet shows explanation in the sort. It is the wind that spreads the seeds in autumn and buries them. Subsequently, he uh, the seeds starts growing in the spring season. If the west wind, west wind, which is also a wild, is melancholic, then the same it causes the growth of new plants on the earth. Apart from this, west winds also uh, wind also spreads the fragrance of flowers while scattering them here and there. In this canto, we do not only realize Shelley's treatment of nature as an object of prime inspiration, but also a source of natural phenomena. We can see wind as an alive object of nature, which performs an action of the welfare of society and humanity. He imagines the power of the wind and shows to this reader that wind is definitely a source of ingenuity. Hope. Uh, you well understand this first canto now move to the second canto of the poem in the second canto Shelley describes the wind not only scatters the leaves but also moves the clouds in the sky without wind clouds, uh, clouds are helpless just like the leaves and flowers are powerless on the <coughs> earth it seems that the poet just praises the beauty and duty of the west helps the clouds to move to the specific location and cause rain on earth. In this canto of the poem, the reader, uh, you and me, uh, observes that the clouds and the winds are not full of actions, but also act as if they are alive human beings. Nowhere we can observe such a in unique style, every romantic poet has this specific attribution. Similarly, it is Shelley's poetry's characteristics that he blows soul in different objects of the nature. There is also an explanation of certain images of the nature in the Canto 3. You can see that and the poet uses blue Mediterranean, crystalline streams, isle of bays, bay, palaces and towers as the beautiful images in this canto. He imagines the presence of wind on those areas of earth and shows his readers the look and uh, feel of those places when the wind blows there. He ends every stanza with the sentence O oh, here. It means that he is trying to talk to the wind as he has he has imagined it as a lively human creature. All the images in this stanza shows that sensation is the prominent features of Shelley's poetry. His strong imaginations add him to the list most romantic poets in the history of the English literature. So the romantic poets also consider that it is their prime duty to explore nature. They escape from the realistic world and find pleasure in the imaginative world. The poet does, that same, <laughs> does the same in this old. He escapes from the harsh world and feels himself in the arms of the wind when he says, if I were a dead leaf, thou mightest bear. If I were a swift cloud to fly with thee. <laughs> so as mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, romantic words love nature from the uh, cores of their heart. Shelley is also in the list of romantic words. Therefore, with the west wind and wants to see each and every place, explanation of which uh, he gives in this last tense of the ode, he requests the wind to take him with it. Reality is harsh because expectation hurts a person too much. Hence, escapism is the only solution of every such problem. Next, in the Canto 4, <coughs> it, uh, he evidently shows escapism as the most from important characteristics of romantic poetry. Po the poet's desire to fly to a faraway land, which is free from the pains and miseries of life, is evident that he loves fantasies. Thus, he prays to the west wind to lift him and take him away from the stubborn miseries of life. In the last canto, the poet portrays the theme of <coughs> uh, melancholy and despondence. The poet knows that he can, uh, he can never fly like the wind, but he wishes to do so. However, when he realizes that he cannot go with him, he becomes sad. Nature always attracts romantic poets, hence the, he insists on going with it. Despite the fact that it is impossible for him to go and fly with the wind, he requests that 
he wants to be the part of the west wing until the spring comes and takes over the winter and out in this final stanza of the poem the poet praises the destructive power of the west wing and wants to be part of it see uh, so the poem though does not seem political or social from from any angle yet some critics argue that there are certain elements in this poem that makes it social the shelley talks about the social change the winds that sh- uh, that shows the seeds and scatter the leaves change the location and clouds are the symbols that the poet uses the expl- for explanation to social change in his ode so thus the poet shows that the society is moving towards the destruction and portrays change as the law of nature